Hello, hello everyone. Happy Friday. I love watching the comments come in and listening to that song. I sing that song in my head all the time now. I know that um, we're not talking about a specific book this week, but I feel like it really captures Jewel somehow. And many of you have been asking about the song. So just so you know, it is Rare Love by Cody Francis. My tech guy looked it up um, and it's just a beautiful song. In fact, I need to look up some of Cody's other work because I just absolutely love it. And if you love it too, hit the like so we can all just send some love out to Cody. <laughs> I also saw a couple questions about weather. I think Marie asked um, if it's hot here in Ashland. And the answer is yes. We're going into a heat wave this weekend. It's supposed to be 100 back-to-back -back days, which um, is pretty hot. The nice thing about Ashland, because we're at about 2,000 feet, is that even if it's hot, um, we get really nice cool nights. So like last night, I think the low was in the low 60s. So you can open everything up and get that nice mountain breeze coming through. I'd love to know what it's like where you are. My exciting news for the weekend is we're doing a second Hamilton showing in our driveway. We had one group of friends over for Hamilton in our driveway last weekend, and we have another group coming for Hamilton in our driveway this weekend because we're trying to minimize, um, you know, being with a lot of people at once. So we're limiting our Hamilton viewings to 10 people. But um, I am not complaining about seeing Hamilton again. I'm quite excited about it, in fact. <laughs> I know. I think there's a heat wave everywhere right now, Lillian. Is that true? It seems like every part of the country is sweltering. I mean, I guess it is mid-July, but you know. Um, so before we get into this week's five things topics, I wanted to just say I am so enjoying the lives. Like everything else that I've done on social media, I initially resisted this idea of lives because I'm like, oh, you know, I've already gotten semi-comfortable with shooting videos, but lives, but I can't believe the difference because I feel like we are all here together, duh, because we all are here together. Um, but it's such an amazing experience. I hope that you're enjoying them too. And one thing that I have learned as we're doing more and more of these is that there is a little bit of a delay, which means if you are asking a question, it might take a couple seconds for me to see it. So don't get discouraged because I try to keep up with questions. So ask, et cetera. And um, if I don't get to your question or comment right away, it's probably just because there's a little bit of a delay and I'm not seeing it. Um, okay. Oh, 104. Oof, that's cool for Arizona. Yikes. <laughs> that's like the worst hottest day ever here in the good old Pacific Northwest. <laughs> 98 at night. Yeah. See? Hmm, I don't know if I could do that. I mean, I guess you just have to have air conditioning if you live in the desert, right? <laughs> I know. I feel like that too. I'm glad you do. And um, yeah, so just know that I'm going to get to your questions if I don't already. Okay, so this week's topic is going to be five things that you can do to support your favorite authors. I am a reader first and foremost, and I've talked about that I know many, many, many times. But one thing that I have learned being on the other side of the equation as an author is that there are lots of things that I can do as a reader myself to support authors. And we're going to go over some of them today, just five easy things that we can all do to help our favorite authors out. But first, I wanted to share three books with you. I wanted to share my stack of um, what I have just finished, what I'm currently reading, and what's up next on my book stack. So, I just finished The Golden Hour by Beatrice Williams. This was such a luscious historical fiction read. It is set in wartime, which if you know anything about my reading habits, you know that's one of my sweet spots for historical fiction. Um, but it's just a really beautiful look at a young American and her experience living in um, the Caribbean during wartime. And of course, the Duke of Windsor plays a role in this too. I loved everything about this book. And one of the things that I think resonated so much are, oh, I should also say that it's written from multiple viewpoints and it crosses uh, multiple sections of time because we hear from the perspective of two different characters. And I, I am a big fan of that. And probably you've pulled that out if you've finished Nothing But Trouble. 
Um, but I think one of the things that really stuck with me after this read is just as women in particular, um, how many years of angst we've been through. There's a whole um, subplot of postpartum depression that runs through the series and just thinking about historically, you know, how women were treated and the access and support to services they had is just, it's phenomenal that um, we are the strong, amazing people that we are today. Uh, so I highly recommend. I would love to hear what you've just read, what you're currently reading, or what's up next. So hit me with those as I move on to what I am currently reading. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. It matches Salisbury Hill by Susan Weiler. I hope that's how you pronounce her last name. This is a modern take on Wuthering Heights. So it is set in modern day and our main character heads over to the Moors because she's inherited her aunt's um, property. And I'm halfway through, as you can see from my bookmark, and I'm devouring it. I loved Wuthering Heights. It was one of my favorite books in high school. And um, I'm loving this modern take. There's not a lot I can say yet because I haven't finished it, but I can say that <laughs> Three nights in a row, I have been reading like this in bed, and the book has hit me because I've fallen asleep because it's so good and delicious. Um, so I highly recommend it. If you are a fan of the Brontes, um, there's a lot of nice little just like juicy nuggets about the original work that gets weaved in. And I know that there's like this mystery that's going on that's going to incorporate um, the Yorkshire Moors and our protagonist's finding of what her connection is to the Bronte sisters. So um, that's all I'll say about that one. Murder in Monday by Ann Purser. Oh, Ann Purser, yes. That's so great. Um, currently reading Hexes and Hemlines by Julia Blackwell. Or Julia Blackwell. That's a great one. Mm. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that one was so big. Okay. Then what I'm reading next, what's next on my TBR pile, this one I've seen all over and I just, I love the cover and I love the concept, Waiting for Tom Hanks. It sounds amazing. I'm just going to read you a little bit of the back cover to um, tease it out for you, okay? Annie Cassidy dreams of being the next Nora Ephron. Who loves Nora Ephron? Raise your hand. I love every movie she's ever made. She spends her days writing screenplays and re-watching Sleepless in Seattle, waiting for her movie-perfect meet-cute. Also, who doesn't love a good meet-cute? Come on. Um, can we talk about The Holiday, my favorite <laughs> December movie of all time? Yeah, the meet-cute is where it's at. If she could just find her own Tom Hanks, a man who's sweet, sensitive, and possibly owns his own houseboat, her problems would disappear and her life would be perfect. But Tom Hanks is nowhere in sight. When a movie starts filming in her neighborhood and Annie gets a job on the set, it seems like a sign. Then Annie meets lead actor Drew Danforth, a cocky prankster who couldn't be less like Tom Hanks if he tried. Their meet cute is more of a meet fail, but soon Annie finds herself sharing some classic rom-com moments with Drew. Her Tom Hanks can't be an actor who's leaving town in a matter of days, can he? Um... Doesn't that just sound so great? It sounds like the perfect July read when we're talking about how hot and sweltering it is. I can't wait to read this outside on my back porch with like an iced lemonade or something sparkly. So delicious. So that's what it's on my stack. I see that some of you are reading Death on Tap. That's great. That must mean that um, you're gearing up for our story collab that just kicked off this week. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of the live. Oh, yeah, Krista Davis, the diva spices it up. Krista's great. She's such a great writer, and she's just an all-around awesome person, too. Um, Genevieve says she watches The Holiday at least five times a year. I think that's, um, I think I could definitely go there. I try to reserve it just for December, but it's so good that um, it's hard. If you haven't seen The Holiday, Jude Law, Jack Black, Kate Winslet, um, who am I forgetting? Cameron Diaz. It's, a, it's just so wonderful. Okay, but onward to our topic for five things. So I want to chat about ways that you can help authors out. And of course, I know that I am an author. So yes, can you do some of these for me? Sure, that would be great. But honestly, the reason that I want to share this, like I said, is because I'm a reader first and foremost. And I love books, as you well know. If you've 
followed me even for like two seconds, you know that I am the biggest book nerd on the planet. I read anything and everything, as is evident from um, this current little stack of three books that I'm sharing. And I think there are so many ways that we can help spread the book love through this community that I want to share some with you. And these, for the most part, are all things that you can do that don't cost a dime. And I know that our favorite authors will so greatly appreciate it. I can say that from personal experience, and I can say that because I know as a reader, um, you probably all feel the same way. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to number one. Number one, you can tell a friend. It's so, it sounds so simple, but here's the thing. Even as a writer, I tend to get an early look at a lot of what's coming out because now, you know, I have an editor or a publicist and agents who might maybe send me an early copy or I might have like that little pulse on the stuff that's going to hit the market in three to six months. I also spend a lot of time at bookstores. Well, sadly, not right now. Um, I spend a, t a lot of time right now like this at bookstores. And so I see a lot of what's new and on the shelf. But even with that, there are constantly <laughs> books that I had no idea about that I find. I want to share a text exchange that I had with a friend this week. It goes something like this. She sends me a screen capture of the other Bennett sister, a novel, and she's like, have you seen this? I'm like, oh my gosh, no, I haven't. And so she, she's like, oh, my sister's halfway through it. She's really enjoying it. I love anything that has even a sliver to do with Jane Austen. So of course my girlfriend knew this about me, but I would say at least half of my text exchanges between friends are about books. So if you have read a book that you have enjoyed, text a friend, call a friend, give that copy to a friend, like whatever, just share with a friend because you never know. There is a high likelihood that even if you think that everybody has seen it, your friend may not have. That just happened with my last book that's coming up, Waiting for Tom Hanks. I had been exchanging with another friend and I said, oh, next up I'm going to read like a fun rom-com, Waiting for Tom Hanks. And she hadn't heard of it either. And I feel like I've seen this book all over social media for the last few weeks, which is why I ended up adding it to my TBR pile. Thank you for telling your friends. Yes. And I'm not, I really am not just talking about my books. I'm talking about any book that you read that you feel like is something that you want to share with the world, like literally just pass it on to a friend, spread the love. All right, moving on. Number two, write a review. Okay, this seems again kind of simple, um, but it's true. Like reviews help so much. They're huge because many readers make choices based on reviews. So if you have read a book that has touched you in any way, I highly recommend that you take a few minutes to write a review, an honest review, certainly. I mean, I know from an author perspective, of course, like there's no escaping the fact that certain people are not going to like your books or there might be a book that doesn't resonate with a reader at a particular point in time. But that's OK, because if every single review was just glowing and over the moon, you know, that's probably not likely, because if you look up any author in the history of time, they've all received some sort of negative review. But I digress. In terms of a review, if you have read a book that you've enjoyed, take two or three minutes and share a review on Goodreads, on your social media pages, on Amazon, on anywhere you can share a review online. It really does help authors out because it makes such a difference to know that readers are out there reading your work in part, and also because there are readers who will go and decide, make a choice as to whether they're going to buy or reserve a copy of a book from a library based on reviews. Hello from Texas. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm excited that I've got you wanting to read Tom Hanks. Doesn't that sound great? I don't know. There's something about, for me, it's kind of like the idea of saving the holiday for winter time. I love reading lighter stuff in the summer. There's just something about kind of being outside in the sun and um, dreaming about Tom Hanks. Why not, right? <laughs> when you go to Barnes & Noble, I've given many ladies suggestions about books I've loved. Yes, do that too. That's a brilliant idea, Lillian. I do that too. I always find myself talking up booksellers. I'll be picking something up and go, oh yeah, did you like this one? Well, then you should try this. I also um, tend to stalk people 
in the aisle that I'm in at the bookstore, you know, so I'll be like, oh, okay, um, what are you reading? That looks good. Have you read that before? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, Marie, that's a great question. What do you think if you see negative reviews of your book? I'm actually next week, I'm going to share something about that. So stay tuned for the end because I'll tell you my thoughts on that. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it's a great topic actually. So thanks for bringing that up. Okay. Onward to number three, request a library hold. This is another one that I think a lot of readers don't know about, but it's a really easy way that you can help support some of your favorite authors. So a good example for our community here is we've just started our Sloan Kraus, our Sloan Kraus collaboration. Woo, say that three times fast. Um, and that series, as you know, is in hardcover first. And I know, trust me, I know that hardcover is a bigger price point for a lot of people. I have a subset of readers who only want hardcover because they like to collect those hardcover books and have them on their shelves. But I have another huge amount of readers who are like, I can't afford $27 for a book, which I fully understand. If there is a book or an author whose work you love or a book that you're excited about and you see that it's only coming out in hardcover, and here's an insider secret in terms of publishing with hardcover. When books come out in hardcover, they usually stay in hardcover for nine months, sometimes a year before they're released in paperback. So it's likely going to be a while before you can get a less expensive version. So my challenge to you, for lack of a better word, is request a hold from your library. Libraries buy a lot of hardcover books. i got to take a sip. <laughs> Just finished Death on Tap. Ah, and you got the next one from your library. Andrea, that's perfect. Yes, libraries buy lots of hardcover books because they last longer. They don't experience the same wear and tear that a paperback does. And if there are, let's say that you look up a book like Waiting for Tom Hanks at the library and there are six holds on it, or maybe there are 60 holds. The more holds that are on a book at the library, the more copies the library will order. So that's great for authors. Um, Patricia says she places holds all the time. Yay! <laughs> I know, and that's the thing. For those of us who go through a lot of books, that gets expensive too. So libraries are a great alternative, and they will definitely take requests and holds. If your library doesn't stock a particular book, like let's say you look up Salisbury Hill because you're excited about some Bronte love, and they don't have it in stock, you can also request a copy, and it's very likely that they'll order it for you. So that's a great and easy way. All right, moving on to number four. Post a picture of the book. I know, I know, these probably seem basic, but again, it's such an easy way to help spread the word about a book that you're excited about reading, a book that you're reading and you're loving, or a book that um, you've already read and loved. I so enjoy seeing pictures of my books. Ah! This is um, a collection of pictures from Instagram recently. And, um, you know, you could post a picture of a library book. It doesn't have to be a book that you've physically purchased either. Or maybe it's a reader who's baked something from one of my books and they're sharing that. Like, it's just such a fabulous way to help spread the word about a book that you're excited about. And like I said, with this book stack, Tom in particular, I saw so many pictures of this on my Instagram feed that I was like, I need to know more about that book. And that is what prompted me to go read the back cover copy and go, oh yes, this is definitely on my summer reading list. Okay. Oh, very nice. Open Book Society is another great spot. There, you know, I'm not up to date with all of the review sites. So yeah, there are plenty of other places that you can share reviews going back to that. Um, I know the, the recipes are, um, are the best part. That maybe makes me happier than even seeing pictures of my books out in the world because I love the idea that anyone would turn to the back of any of my books and actually try to bake something that I have created. Like mm, that brings me goosebumps every day. Seriously. Okay. Last but not least, number five is pre-order your books. 
Okay, so our first four were all free ways that you can help support authors and books that you love. Number five is something that does cost money potentially, but it makes a huge difference. If there's a series that you're reading or there's a book coming out that has a lot of buzz that you're excited about and you are able to pre-order a copy, it's huge because publishing houses look at those pre-order numbers and oftentimes will make determinations about print runs. So let's say a book is going to have an initial run of 2,000 copies. Well, a publishing house might see that there are a number of pre-orders and decide to bump that initial print run up. So maybe then they're going to double it. Maybe suddenly they're going to print 5,000 copies of a book or 10,000 copies of a book. A pre-order is a great way and to help an author is what I was going to say. And one thing I know about pre-ordering for me is that um, because there are so many books that I want to read and there are so many books floating around my book universe, I will often pre-order right away when I see a book that sounds intriguing or when I see one of my favorite authors has a new book coming out. Why? Because I might forget about it. Let's be real. There are so many books out there um, and no, not enough time in the day to always read them. So if I pre-order, then I know I'm not going to forget. And then I also know that come release day or release week, I'm going to just receive a beautiful box of books on my doorstep. Yes, Christella, it is like giving yourself a little gift. It's like this magical little birthday present that just arrives on your doorstep. And one of the things that I always like to talk about, you can pre-order books from your favorite authors anywhere on any of the major e-retailers or any of the bookstores that you like to shop at, but independent bookstores also offer pre-order. So you could call up, you know, any of your favorite independent bookstores, even just on the phone and say, Hey, I want to put a pre-order in for X title. And then it's likely that you're going to get a beautiful box of books like this in the mail. This was my birthday books. <laughs> this is, I'm in an alliteration mood today, I guess. This was my birthday book box from Beach Books and they all come wrapped and they leave like little sweet notes. I did an Instagram live with um, Alexa, one of the amazing booksellers from Beach Books last week, and we talked about this. So, so many of the independent bookstores are like book concierges. You could say like, oh, I love this, this book. Do you have other books coming out like it? And they'll find them. So I love that idea. Carolyn says, I recently discovered good books. Ooh, love it. Excellent. Okay. So, those are my five easy, simple ways that you can help your favorite authors out. If you have other ideas or things that you've tried, definitely share them in the comments below because anything I think that we can do as bookish people to continue to spread the book love, especially right now because bookstores are closed and are not, not completely, but bookstores are often you know, shuttered in terms of being able to go in and browse the shelves. So this is an interesting way that we can try to help make sure that some of our favorite authors get the word out, out about their books. Love it. Okay. So <clears throat> I want to talk on that note after I take a sip of my iced coffee, because I'm still in ice mode as we talked about. Um, again, on this topic, one of the reasons that I want to have guests on our Five Things Friday, author guests in particular, is to help continue to spread the word about my author friends and authors who maybe I don't know and I'm not familiar with, but I'm excited about their, their work. So from here on out, every other Friday, ish, based on um, schedules, I'm going to have an author guest on for our five things. So some of the upcoming authors that I've invited ha are going to include S.C. Perkins, Esme Addison, Hannah Dennison, Audrey, I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name, we'll have to ask her, I think it's Keen, I'm not sure, Jenny Kales and Leslie Budowitz, plus I have many more in the works. I think this will just be a fun way for all of us to get to have a conversation together about books and authors who we love. I'm going to be asking all those authors to share five things with all of us 
that they want us to know. And then I'll be asking them five questions and then we'll have just lots of opportunities to chat. So I'm super excited to in introduce you maybe to some new authors who you're not familiar with or give you a chance to spend time with authors who maybe you are completely familiar with and we're just gonna all hang out and drink coffee and uh, chat on a Friday. Oh, Joan says she gives the books to her sisters and her friends. That's a great idea. Yes, absolutely. My sister and I talk books probably more than anything else. Um, oh, and Christella says book clubs. Absolutely. Book clubs are another fantastic way to um, connect readers to new books. Uh, when I was first starting out in my career, I think I did something like 107 book clubs in the first six months, and it was amazing. I would go to people's houses and we would meet at tea shops and pubs. And I just love the fact that there are book clubs still in the world today. And one thing that I think is really interesting is when I was first starting out, many of the book clubs that I would go and visit were, you know, predominantly retired um, groups of women and a few men scattered in their men. We need more book club, book clubs for and by men. I don't know. I don't know how we make that happen. But um, anyway, one thing that I've noticed is there's also been a shift now that because of digital space, I'm seeing lots of younger readers starting book clubs, even via Zoom or online, which I think is so cool. So maybe the upside of this experience is that we're going to introduce some new readers to the concept of a book club, which I love. <laughs> Yay. Oh, Genevieve, I'm glad that these are going to be new authors for you. They're all great. Um, and like I said, I have even more authors lined up for the rest of the year. So you can anticipate that every other five things-ish um, will have a guest author come on. And that will be so super fun, I think. Okay, let's see. Let's go into our story collaboration. I know that many of you are already part of the group. But if you haven't joined yet, we have just kicked off my next cozy collaborative mystery spinoff. This is being done through my Facebook group. We've only started with two, two questions so far, so it's not too late to join in. I can tell you that the first question we basically already have a winner for. I think that our sleuth is going to be Garrett Strong, Sloan's brewing partner. It's so fun because with the Facebook group, we're able to do polling so we can see in real time what the polls are doing. But one of the things that I'm super excited about since we've done one story, oh, the polls are in. I see them here. Garrett is by far the winner. Um, yesterday's question was about where in Leavenworth we're going to have Garrett find the body. And right now, the bookshop does walk is winning. Um, but there's still a few hours left to vote. And I'm going to be posing question number three in a little while, probably not long after this live is open. I had a feeling I haven't even really talked much about the bookstore. This is going to be, um, I think, I think you're going to find, I can't remember when I first mentioned it now. I think it's in book four that Sloan mentions it. It might even be in book five, which I'm working on edits for soon. But I had a feeling if I just put it out there that that might be what you all decided on because come on, like it's, it's pretty fun. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I'm excited about and on top of the fact that we get to see polling in real time because we've done this collaboration once before, and I think we all learned things in the process, I really am excited about all of your comments as well. Like trying to think through like, why would Garrett make a good sleuth? Or why would April? Or why wouldn't they? And kind of having that dialogue back and forth. Because I think one thing that does is it really puts you into the head of a writer to try to think of like, well, what would this particular character's motive be? Why would they be intrigued about wanting to figure out who a killer is? You know, do they have some personal stake or investment in figuring that out? Perhaps it's the fact that someone they love has been accused of murder, or maybe the murder has taken place in their little nano brewery and they have to make sure 
that their space is cleared of all that negative energy, whatever it is. So as we go through this, even though we're going to be using polls, I want you to really be thinking and having those conversations back and forth because I am convinced that is what really sparks our creative energy. Yeah, I'm glad you agree. I think the dialogue is really fantastic and I'm I'm hoping for lots more of that as we go on. So thank you already for your amazing suggestions. And the other thing is, um, obviously I'm not voting because I'm posing the questions and I want this to, again, be a collaboration that you are leading the charge. But I am going through and reading the entire trail of dialogue because as I begin to actually write what we are plotting out together, I want that background in my head too. So definitely as you go, if you think of other suggestions or kind of like subplots, throw them at me. Now remember, of course, this is like going to be a 50, 60 page spinoff. So we don't have the page space to go into super detail. But I think if we know that as writers together, then that layer kind of just finds its way in. Maybe if it's not physically on the page, we know that in our background. So that's awesome. My book club's name was Women Interested in New Editions, The Wine Club. <laughs> Katie, I want to be in your club. Can I come join? I'll be an honorary guest. I'll bring my own wine. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> my book club is eight of us girls. This is Leah, who went to college together. Awesome way. Oh, that is a sweet idea, Leah, that it's like your point of connection with your college friends. That's, I should do that. I should get all my college bud buddies together. I can't see the books in your bookcase. Zoom over there, please. <laughs> I love it. Um, I think they are the big shops. Samantha, Samantha's got you. I have the, I got to go like this. Um, that stack right there is the bake shop. I've got Sloan up around. Nothing but trouble and our fake brunch spinoff is in the middle. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but the bunt pan in the middle is a bunt pan that Paddington Station gave me as a gift. Um, and um, they inscribed it for me. So I love it. Will the bookstore be like main house or a book for all seasons? Definitely like a book for all seasons, Arzani. Um, so that's where I imagine it to be. And I don't know if it's winning yet and I don't wanna sway our group one way or the other, but I do have a picture of the bookstore where I imagine it to be. So that's awesome. <laughs> oh, Katie, thank you. Okay, tell me when it is next and I'll pour myself a glass of wine and come crash your party. Or maybe Leah, your college friends, can I pass as your college friend? Maybe, I don't know. Um, okay, so just as a reminder, if you are if you haven't heard, if this is your first time joining us and you haven't heard about the collaboration, be sure to join the group. We're doing it in a private group. The Collaborative Cozy Mysteries is the name of our group. I will admit you in. The only reason that we're doing a private group is because everybody gets to definitely see the content. And I know that was an issue for a lot of people in the last one that we did. So, and the, there's really no rule in terms of how this goes other than I want us all to have fun and to be positive and to hopefully help spark our collective creative energy and um, maybe get you thinking a little bit of what it's like to be in a mystery writer's head sometimes right? Um, all right, let's see. Oh, your book club is online on Zoom. Yes. Spider Woman's Daughter tomorrow. Oh, I don't know that one. I'm going to have to check that out. I know Ann Hillerman, of course, but um, I haven't heard that title. So hmm. my stack is always growing, guys. Thanks a lot. No, actually, thank you a lot. <laughs> I always want book recommendations too, which is one of the reasons that I tend to share so many posts and videos about what I'm reading too. Not only because I want to do what I just am asking you to do, which is share about books that I love or am excited about, um, but also because every time I share what I'm reading, then you all tell me what you're reading and my TBR stack goes like this. <laughs> and that's never a bad thing in my opinion. Um, let's see. Hit me up with any other questions that you have. I want to, before I go into what next week's five things topic is going to be, I just have to show you the cutest picture from the front yard. Baby deer. Ooh. How cute are they? Do you see the little tiny spots? They just, they trot through our yard. This is our garden next door um, that we share with our neighbor. 
I think like two weeks ago, they were the size of a cat. And now they're growing up. They're going to be gangly teens in a few days, but I just love them so much. <laughs> in fact, my husband and son made a slow down baby deer sign for our front yard because a couple weeks ago when they were so tiny, we were worried that somebody might like, we live up on a hill and people kind of fly up the hill sometimes. Um, and can you imagine running over a baby deer? Like nobody wants that karma, right? Um, so what I love is if we're upstairs in our front room, you see somebody driving down the hill and then they stop when they see the slow baby deer sign and they look around. Like, I wish that we could like build a little nest for them and have like our own little private. Oh, I love them. I love them so much. They're so cute. One thing is that Ashland, and I, I talk about this in the Big Shop Mysteries, Ashland really does have deer that just kind of roam wild throughout town. Um, downtown, you'll see them crossing the street. Oftentimes they cross in the crosswalk. Like the joke around town is that the deer obey the traffic laws better than pedestrians do when tourists are in town. Um, and there are some people who get really irritated with the deer because there are a lot of them. Um, and they do like to eat things. I've learned the hard way over the years not to plant anything in my front yard that's um, even stuff that says that it's deer resistant. They come and they chow down. So all of my garden boxes are always like up um, the side deck where the deer can't access them. But I don't care. I still love them. They're so cute. Um, do I live near Jules? I might. I might live somewhere near Jules. Hmm. Um, okay. Onward. I just had to um, show, show that to you because I look for them now every time I go out in the morning to open the door, let my dog outside, of course. Um, let's see. Oh, Jeanette is saying, did I miss an update on my future class? Uh, no, I haven't talked about that yet. I I know that I said this before, but I really can't stress enough like how big of an undertaking this was for me on top of obviously writing books too. But um, now the hard work for me is done and it is all transferred over to my partner in crime, my husband, who is, as we speak, editing all of the videos. So the course should be ready by the end of the month, early next month. And as soon as it's ready to go out, I promise I will be sharing information about it everywhere. Um, I can tell you that I'm beyond excited about how it turned out. It was worth my blood, sweat, and lots and lots of tears. Um, I actually learned so much about my own writing process over the course, over the course of putting the course together um, because... I think I learned so much of what I know along the way, like kind of piecing things together and so much trial and error and things that didn't work initially, a lot of things that didn't work, a lot of trails that I went down that ended up massive dead ends. And so I've just kind of learned as I go. I obviously took tons of workshops and classes myself. I did two long-term mentorships with master teachers early on in my career. And so all of that and everything that I've learned, not only about writing, but also about the process of how you write a query letter, how you find an agent, how you write a book proposal, how you market yourself, how you market your books, like all of that is included in this course that I'm going to be offering. So um, it was a daunting process, but I'm so excited about it. And I feel like if you are at all interested in writing a mystery, this is going to give you everything from the start of an idea to finding an agent and a publishing contract. I can say that without a doubt. And I'm excited to be your cheerleader. So I can't wait for it to be live. There's still some finishing touches to um, be done on it, but it will be ready soon. So I promise that as soon as it is, I will be sharing it out everywhere because one of the, one of the motives for myself, one of the motives, one of the motivations, I'm still in uh, mystery writing mind. Um, one of the motivations for writing it is that I get asked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot if um, for help on writing a book, for advice. And if I... <laughs> took all the time to answer all of those emails. Personally, I would never be able to finish writing a book. So this last six months has been an opportunity for me to take some of that extra time when I might have been traveling and doing other things for books and take everything that's in my head and around my office here and put it into one concise place. So 
I'm super excited to share it with you. I feel like if I was starting out on my path for mystery writing and had this course, it would have just been like amazing and having a best friend along the way. So that's my goal with it. Um, and stay tuned. There will be more to come. Um, all right. Next week for our five things topic, I am, and this goes back to, I think Marie asked this early on, I'm going to share five mean reviews with you. I'm going to pull five mean reviews from my books and we're going to talk about what it's like to be an author on the review end of things. And we'll just have some fun with it. Have you all seen um, mean tweets back in the day? Is it still happening with COVID? I'm not sure. My, uh, my tech guy doesn't know either. Maybe you know. But um, it'll be in that tone, of course. Um, but I'll also talk a little bit just about like the review process in general and everything. So it should be super fun. And then the week after that, I will have my friend SC Perkins on to talk about her new ancestry mystery that's coming out, um, I think next week or the week after. I'll have to look, but I'll share information about that live. Let's see, any last questions? Uh, Christella asked if nothing but trouble is going to be on Audible. Oh, Audible is like mm -hmm, the bane of my existence right now. I know. So, what I can tell you, unfortunately, is that audiobook sales took a real hit with the pandemic. I mean, Obviously, bookstores across the country have been shuttered. There, there are lots of factors in the whole realm of publishing um, with every other industry, right? But uh, one thing that the publishing house has learned is that audio sales really took a hit because a number of readers listen to audio when they're commuting. And when commutes went away, a huge percentage of that readership went away. Of course, there's another whole percentage of readers who read on Audible for lots of reasons, including, you know, perhaps being blind, right? Um, so I am hoping that once things kind of settle down, we'll be back in a zone for audiobooks to go. But the short answer is I just don't know. Um, and I've been asking my publishing house and, and they don't know right now either. So it's a super big bummer for me. Um, okay. <laughs> Does my hubby have an actual name or is he just my tech guy? That's funny. <laughs> he doesn't have a name. I'll never share it. Never. He's cracking up right now. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that'll be our cliffhanger for this week. What is Ellie's husband's name and will he share? <laughs> yeah, I love audio for so many reasons. Um, and of course, they're, they're critical for readers who might um, be visually impaired. Um, and then for readers who like to sing around the kitchen and like do other projects while they're listening to a book. So I don't, I, I'm hoping that this is not going to be a long-term issue, but um, I just, I wish I had a better answer and I'll keep working on it. Um, all right. I think that about wraps up our live for this Friday. As always, thanks so much for joining me. It's so much fun to spend a Friday morning with you. We'll be back next Friday at 10 o'clock for five things mean reviews edition. Get ready. Toughen up those, your writer skin. That's another thing that I talk about in the course, how important it is that as we venture into writing, um, that we learn um, kind of how to not take some of that stuff to heart. Um, and then my last reminder is if you haven't already, make sure you join our story collaboration. If you're interested in writing a spinoff together, go vote on um, where we're going to set our murder because that's going to close shortly. And then get ready for question number three to come today. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Happy weekend. See you soon.